Hey guys, just wanted to show you our 1959 Cadillac Eldorado Seville. Uh, it's one of our favorite cars. We have about we have 13 cars, I think. This is my favorite. Uh, uh, two weeks ago, I posted a 59 Cadillac uh, on my channel and you guys were going crazy about it. And I was like, man, I can't wait for them to see our Eldorado because the Eldorado is, that was Cadillac's baby in 1959. You can see Seville, Eldorado. So what made an Eldorado special? See that piece of trim right there and it gets bigger and wider? That's what makes Eldorado special, at least to me anyways. And you can just see it, it just wraps around the whole car, man, and it just shoots forward. How cool is that? That is just so cool. I love that. So that's how I fell in love with these cars. I, I always loved 59 Cadillacs, but the Eldorado model, man, that, that piece of trim, uh, it just makes the car look good from every angle. It's just so cool. I love it. And uh, uh, so the one I posted was, uh, it was a green. My buddy sent me the video. It was, it was from Pomona. Um, that was a Coupe de Ville. So Coupe de Ville just has a single strip that goes from the bumper end right there on the quarter. And then it shoots for just a single strip, a straight strip. So every 59 Cadillac, if you're not familiar, this is what people recognize when they see a 59 Cadillac. These bullet tail lights and the fins. And I always tell them, all 59 Cadillacs have the fins. If you're in love with the fins, buy a four-door sedan. You can get them, you know, fairly reasonable. Eldorados are, man, they're, they're so expensive now, especially the convertible, which is the Barretts. This is the Eldorado hardtop, which is a Seville. The Brits is big time money, like the cost of a house, big. Uh, pretty much dream car type stuff. We got this car. Man, look at that trim, dude. How cool is that? <laughs> uh, we got this car in 2009. <clears throat> I was 24 years old and I remember it like yesterday. It was election Tuesday. That's when we found this car. Um, I was, everyone was out voting. I was on, uh, I was on eBay looking for cars. And I found this on a buy it now. And the lady was going through a divorce thing or something. And she put a, she put a fairly reasonable buy it now. And with the click of the button, it was ours. Just crazy, man. Like, I didn't even have to think about it. Like, I saw the number, the price. I hollered at my dad. I said, dude, let's do it. He said, all right. We clicked the button. We paid her up. It was two hours away in Bakersfield, which is a trip, dude. And we drove it back. My dad was going 80 miles per hour on the freeway with factory airbag suspension. And we'll get into the factory airbag shortly. So... Um, <clears throat> so it was a great day for us. The car means a lot to me and, uh, we bought it right. I was going through a tough time in my life. I was, I was out of work and this is right before I started Mad Mooks, my company. The car means a lot to me and, um, it's just the one car you don't sell. Um, 975 Eldorado Seville's made, man. It's a really low production car. Oddly enough, the convertible, which gets more money, the Barretts, they made about 1300 And I gotta believe that a lot of Seville's were parted out to make Barretts's. It's kind of a known fact. So, man, that just makes a Seville even more, even more hard to find, which is kind of cool. Um, all right, so I just opened up the hood. I mentioned factory airbags. This car has factory airbags, uh, which is wild. Um, it's not, it's not how you would think about factory airbags. You know, most people think of airbags, you know, up and down and uh, Cadillac had it. So you were driving on air. That's, that's why they had it. And they offered it in 1958. And I believe till 1960 for the Eldorado line. So Eldorado's I guess look at it like if you go into a dealership today and you go in the showroom 
and the cars that they have in the showroom are their best cars, right? The cars in the showroom have every single option on the window sticker, right? That's how El Dorado was. El Dorado had every single option that Cadillac offered. It was just, um, it was just an amazing car. So never mind the trim on the side, which is the reason that we wanted it. Back in 59, the reason you wanted an El Dorado is it because it had every option. Airbag suspension. I'm just gonna go through them. Uh, I call it the vinyl top, but the correct um, terminology is visitic top. It's kind of like vinyl, I don't know. Uh, very cool, I love it. It gives it a just kind of a cool two-tone, you know? Uh, but in 1957, I believe they started offering vinyl tops uh, for Cadillac. So just really cool. The interior is really dirty, so I apologize. Um, my garage is dirty. Um, so, uh, we got the vinyl top, airbag suspension. Now, if you're noticing that big gold air cleaner, tri-power. So, these cars had a 390 cubic inch tri-power, three carburetors, three two-barrel carburetors, which is really cool. Um, uh, so, if you have the gold air cleaner, I mean, they're, they're worth some money, just the air cleaner alone. The tri-power setup's worth some money, so... All the Eldorados came with the tri-power, air compressor for the airbags. This is the air compressor for the airbags. I don't know if I mentioned that. It's belt driven, it's got pistons, really cool. The problem with airbag suspension and the reason why a lot of guys switched back the coils is because they leaked. And when they leaked, this is what you had, a slammed Cadillac, which is pretty awesome in my opinion but it wasn't awesome back then because people you know people weren't really into that and when you want to drive your car it takes you like 15 minutes to start it up and where you can actually drive it because the system leaks uh, it takes a long time to get it up to ride height and we experienced this right when we bought it we experienced it and um so it's just a pain in the ass, man, to, to, if you have factory airbags in one of these things uh, and it's not rebuilt or whatever, it, they're, they're a pain in the ass just to get in and, and go. So what we did is we bypassed, we bypassed all the original stuff, put a modern compressor in the trunk, we, we ran our own lines, but we kept everything, um, the airbag buckets, the airbags, we kept all that stock because we we didn't want to disturb any of the originality so we just ran our own lines and our own fittings and now we're basically under our own control we bypassed the faulty part of it and we still have airbag suspension so i love i, I love slammed cars we're really into that i know a lot of you guys don't like that um in this case i feel like we get a pass because we kept it original. We just, we just routed our own lines and did our own thing and we're making it functional now. We're made, we made it better pretty much. Uh, still stock airbags, you know? There's, there's places that reproduce the airbags, fortunately, and uh, everything's still original. So if we ever sold it one day, like we didn't disturb anything, we didn't weld anything on, you know, for the airbags, everything is still original, which is cool. So, um, so that's that. So we, we modernized the airbag suspension. Let's see here, cruise control. Man, I love talking about this cruise control. Um, it's just such a wild option, you know, to have cruise control on a 1959 car. I mean, it sounds like a death wish in my opinion, and I would never use it. I would never in a million years think about using it, but it's just so cool that it's there. You know, to tell someone that your 59 Cadillac has cruise control, that is just such a trip. That's it. Mechanical fu uh, cruise control. It, it's just, man, it's just so cool, dude. These cars are just so amazing. Um, so just real quickly to go through this, because I don't want to run out of time. Um, this is actually going to be my first long video. Uh, I just started the YouTube channel. Um, I appreciate everyone that's watching. Um... We have a lot of cars, man, and it's just going to be it's going to be cool to go through them with you guys. And if you're on Instagram, I have 75,000 followers on Instagram. My company name is Mad Mooks. Instagram, Mad Mooks underscore classic cars. And I'm 39 years old. I started my company when I was 26 and I just never looked back, man. Never looked back. 
It was like straight out of a movie. I was going to my job, which I hated at the time, stuck on the freeway. And I just, I was, I was slightly hung over. I'm not going to lie. It was a Monday. It was about 6.30 in the morning. I was stuck on the freeway, just miserable. just hating my life, hating my job. And I called up my dad and I said, dude, I'm going to quit. I'm out. And he said, what are you going to do for money? You know, my dad is just totally old school, you know, graveyard shift kind of guy. And I said, I'm going to start my own classic car business. And it took him about a half a second to say, go for it. And I knew right then, once he said, go for it, I knew, I knew this was it. I just knew it. So I just never looked back. So, uh, but we'll, we'll dive into the whole Mad Mooks thing later. Um, let's get back into this Cadillac. Okay. So I talked to you. All right. So let's go back to the trunk. Cause another cool option I really like. They were way ahead of their time. So let's see. So new Cadillacs have soft closed doors, old Cadillacs. Soft closed trunks. How cool is that? That is dope. I love that. Um, usually there's supposed to be a trim. It goes around here, it says Eldorado, but we don't have it on there right now. You know, this is a driver. It's nothing fancy, nothing restored. You know, it looks great. Drive it around, get a ton of people asking about it. That's just what it's all about. We don't do show cars. We don't do that thing, you know? That's just not for us. Um, we like drivers. And a lot of the cars that I show you are, man, they're, they're beat up, they're patina. They're, you know, not in the greatest of shape. But we drive them. That's what it's all about. If you have a great design, it's okay that it's beat up. You don't have to have a trailer clean or show car. You don't need to have a couple hundred thousand dollars in your car. That's that's all pastime stuff. That's like 2001, 2002, 2003 during the Super Chevy days where you couldn't go into the show unless you had a show car. You know, that's just all behind us. You know, Patina is in. Um, we have a few cars that are Patina. I'm cool with patina to a certain extent. I don't like rusty cars, right? Patina to me is when you have original paint and it's just weathered, it's weathered and it's faded. Maybe the red oxide primers, you know, bleeding through. That to me, that's patina. Um, rusty cars, not patina, you know? So patina within reason, you know what I'm saying? There's our 55 Nomad. All right, so what other options? <clears throat> See that thing on the top of the top of the hood there? Uh, not hood, uh, the dash. That is, they call it an atronic eye. So what that does is when you have your high beams on, it will recognize oncoming traffic. And if there's someone coming on the highway towards you, it will automatically turn your high beams off. That is pretty cool. Love that. Uh, this thing has this thing has power everything. Power power uh, windows, power vent wings. So these things are power, which is cool. Um, oddly enough, it, AC so it, it came with every option, with with exception to a few. AC was not standard, which was which just odd to me. Um, so this one did not come with AC. It was a California car, did not come with AC. The previous owner wanted to add it. So they were in the process of adding it. Um, this car is not an AC car. Uh, they, they added it, um, which is odd. Um, what other options did this thing have? I know I'm forgetting stuff. Uh, obviously power seats. Um, let's see here. I mean, power, I mean, you know, just the obvious stuff, power brakes, power steering, you know, all, all that's pretty standard. Um, I talked about the tri-power. I think that's it. These uh, 975 made, Eldorado Seville's 1320 Brits. 
Um, it's just my favorite car. It's my favorite car, not just because of the fins, but because of that trim. This is, this is what makes the Eldorado special right there, man. That's why guys want it. It's, it's crazy to think a Baritz cost a quarter million dollars because of a piece of trim. <laughs> I, I, that's my reasoning. That's, that's why I think people want Eldorados is because of that piece of trim. It's so unique. It makes the car look so cool. Uh, obviously, Eldorados are special. They have every option, right? It's, it's Cadillac's best. Like, so, uh, you know, obviously people want the Baritz because of that. The Baritz is a convertible, so that, that also has appeal. Um, but uh, that trim, man, that trim is really expensive. I sold just the quarter piece. I sold to a guy in Australia like 15 years ago. And I sold it for, it was like two, three grand just for the piece of trim. So if you want all the all the side trim pieces, if you wanna convert your Series 62 to an Eldorado, let's say like a clone or something, it's, it's gonna cost you 10 grand. Isn't that a trip? And someone actually makes them. I haven't seen the pieces in person. I, I heard the fit is an issue. He wants like 10 grand. So, you know, if I'm, if I'm paying 10 grand for something, uh, I'm sorry, but there should be no fitment issues at all. And this is coming from someone that manufactures parts for a living. You know, I, I know that the parts are, you know, they're long pieces and they're probably super hard to make. I understand all that. But 10 grand is 10 grand. I just, I, when I heard that, I just thought it was kind of Not trying to knock someone else's product, but when I heard that there's fitment issues, I was like, why? 10 grand, dude. But props to him. Props to him for making it. I think it's cool that he went after it. He had to have the cojones to go after it. It's not, it's not, man, it, it you know, if it was easy to make, everyone would make it. Simple as that. So uh, I salute you for that. Um, so I'm going to bring this car out. This winter, well, I'm in Arizona, so our car show season is right now because the temperatures are down to 70 degrees and so forth. Uh, usually it's too hot uh, to drive these cars. Um, so it's starting to cool off and we're gonna take them out, finally. And once I get it out in the driveway, it'll look a lot better. You know, I'm doing this in my garage right now and it's just, it's hard to get a shot. You know, I'm limited to one side right here, so I apologize. Um, if you guys uh, want to make any suggestions, this is my first long video. So if you guys want to make any suggestions on how I can do a better job, you know, feel free. Go easy on me though. Don't, don't, don't be too mean. <laughs> oh, power door locks. I forgot that one. Power door locks. Um, so that's it. I appreciate y'all watching and did I say that right? I appreciate you all watching and, uh, thanks for following the subscribing the channel. Don't for, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're not that, that that's very helpful. Um, I'm just getting started. So, um, uh, I got, I, we got a lot to post, a lot of cool stuff coming up. I'm in the car business. We manufacture parts. So I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing car reviews. So I have a bunch of people in town right now signed up to do car reviews. Uh, just to give you an, uh, just a kind of a sneak preview, 57 Safari, 55 Nomad, uh, 57 Chevy hardtop. What else do I got? 57 Olds. Two to a hard top, super cool car. So we have kind of a small list lined up for car reviews and each review will be about, I don't know, probably 30 minutes. Uh, man, it seems like 20 minutes went by real quick just now. So I could see it being probably 30 minutes long, maybe longer, we'll see. Anyways, thanks for watching and uh, have a good day.